Welcome to another episode of Band Director Bootcamp, the podcast with productivity and wellness tips for busy band directors. I'm your host, Leslie Moffat, and I'm really grateful to be sharing this platform with you. As busy band directors, we know you don't have lots of time to sit and watch lengthy professional development webinars, so we give you 20-minute takeaways or tidbits with takeaways you can use to support you in this awesome profession, but in a healthier way. And today is someone who I sought out because um, productivity went way up for me and for my students when I discovered what Roger Fletcher has out there available for teachers. So before I really bring him on board, uh, first of all, I want to say thanks, Roger, for being here. You're welcome. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm not going to let you talk for a second because I don't want anybody uh, to miss what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to tell you, um, most of you out there listening know that I've taught for 35 years and almost all of that till last year was high school band. So I was a little out of my element with middle school and beginners. And um, I was on the struggle bus with some of the kids because I was, you know, we're trying to figure all this out as we went. And I had this one group, my sixth period class every day that uh, put the fun in dysfunctional, let me tell you. And we, we struggled with some of the things that worked with all my other classes. So I just couldn't figure out what to do. The range of what the kids' abilities and interests and all that were, they were all seventh graders or most of them were, some of them had switched instruments and not told me at the beginning of the year that, yeah, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. And so we were going in the year and, and, uh, and I sat down with them. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And they're like, well, the band book's just not cutting it. They, they weren't motivated and the like. And then I came across, Roger had a, um, uh, I think it was Rhino Rock out there as, hey, free flex, or not, not flex band. It was a tiered tune. And I'm like, I don't know what that is, but it's free. So I'm going to find out. And I downloaded it. And I learned a whole new repertoire kind of thing that's out there. And uh, I'm going to have him explain it. But what it did for my students and for me, absolutely, especially with that class, just shifted what we were able to do. It met every kid at the level where they were, um, and some of them could work their way up as they progressed through it while we were still working on the same music, and it just became an incredible teaching tool. My stress levels went way down, and when that's the last class of your day, you don't want your stress levels high because then you carry that home. So for me, this was a productivity and a wellness tip that just, it just spoke Like, oh, this is a guy you got to have on the podcast so everybody else knows. So Roger Fletcher is a composer. He spent 30 years teaching high school band and beginners. And so he's been in the trenches. He knows what it's like. And then he told me about his 13-year sabbatical when he went off to play in the Air Force Academy band. Um, So he has a ton of experience. And he has put that to great use so that band directors like you and me don't have to figure it all out. Longest introduction I've ever done on the podcast, but I just want everybody to know what cool stuff this is. And I'm going to have him talk about it and uh, teach you. So Roger Fletcher, thanks again for being here today. Can you share a little bit of your background and what led you to all of this? Uh, sure. <clears throat> I, I started out teaching, oh gosh, in a little bitty school. It was about 300 kids, K-12. And I had five through 12 instrumental and six through 12 vocal. And, and, you know, it ran, ran the whole gamut. And then uh, I was talking to uh, some, some fellow faculty members and, and they were asking where I was going to go next. And I I said, what do you mean? They said, Oh, well, the last guy uh, went into the, Air Force band, and he he just thinks he's in heaven. I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sticking around. And then I went home and called a guy, and they had a trumpet opening at the Air Force Academy. And uh, so I auditioned and got in there as a trumpet player. Then they thought I was a singer for a while, and then I wanted to be a writer for a while, and I bounced among those three for a long time. And and then when the uh, when the wall came down and everybody was talking about the peace dividend back in 92, for those of you that are old enough, uh, the Air Force waved some money under my nose as a mid-career guy to get out so they wouldn't have to pay me a full retirement later on. And I jumped and went back into teaching. That was really where I felt I uh, I belonged. And my first gig back was just fifth grade beginners at five different elementary schools. And so I immediately started wrestling with this, man, the fast burners are getting bored and some of the slow ones are still lost. And so, so I started writing these little extra challenge parts for the, for the burners and easier parts, but trying to keep them, you know, so that they were meaningful to the music and melodic to keep the kids interest. Um, 
And I, I never did the formal design of putting that all together really until last year. Uh, but but that's that's the the beginnings of, of my tiered tunes. And then again, I taught the rest of a 30 year career and and now I have time to really devote to trying to help others with uh, these little puzzles. Big puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for, so if you're not familiar with tiered tunes out there listening, um, unlike Flexband, these are there are three distinct levels, for example, on some of these. Um, and, you know, you start with I started with everybody doing level one. And then we, who's ready for level two kind of thing when it was time. And so you'd add that on. And the ones that were still working on level one could still play it. Level two added more, more challenge for some kids, but still that stability. And then, of course, adding level three um, just re- makes it more enriching. But what I loved is students didn't s- stay stagnant on a single piece. You know, they wanted to move through it. So it, each piece became much more than just one song that, you, you know, you didn't just learn the second clarinet part for one song you learned different parts if you were good and i even had a kid a rohan one of my little beginning trumpet players who could hear me up front when i would play i would bounce between the parts as needed when i play along with the kids and so he started listening and he could figure out which of the parts he wanted to play and he would jump between them so he was even at a different level so there was like this fourth tier that we didn't talk about that he just did and it was like our little thing like he he could jump around and so i was like wow this this has got the kid that struggles to put their instrument together and the kid who's gonna you know be an all-state kid someday down the road and they're all playing together and and it was to me just such a it, it provides so much so why uh, or, or i guess i want you to talk to us a little bit about other ways maybe used um, that you know of people using it or that you might have used it um some of the songs that you've got out there tell us a little more about all of this stuff sure um well one of the things that we've uh, just stumbled on uh I had a director call me that was using Rhino Rock, and and she said, "Is there a way that we can add some higher tiers so we can do this?" Um, oh, I forget what your festival concert or whatever with the high school and the middle school and mm-hmm. and and the younger kids, and and it, we started looking at it. And it was like you know, if if you take those original three tiers up an octave. <laughs> For your for your high schoolers, you've kind of got tiers four, five, and six. So so that was another you know cool additional level that I hadn't even thought about going in, and it seems to work fairly well with with a lot of this because we tend to be working at kind of a, tier one is usually a first five or six notes kind kind of level, and depending on you know just how far we want to go with that, some of the rhythms are maybe a little bit more challenging than when they're first at that level in terms of their range. Uh, and then tiers two and three tend to get up to maybe, you know, the ninths of the scale. Um, and sometimes a little above that. I've got a few things that go up to a, to a grade two uh, on, on just the top level. And it's always kind of optional. You know, if you've got somebody to be challenged, it's there. But the tunes work pretty well with uh, with just tiers one and two, or many of them just tier one, like you say on Rhino Rock. That that originally was just my that tier one was one of my favorite tunes that I wrote for uh, for my elementary bands when I was when I was doing that. So. Um, I forgot what the rest of your question was. Well. You just pointed out something really awesome too. these tiered pieces make it really organic to combine grade levels so that the younger kids are playing with, you know, like middle school and high school together. We're always looking for those because all of us, you know, do these recruiting concerts. And so something like this, that's easy to put together, but lets those little guys play along with the the older kids and be part of that. That's priceless. And and they could also, if they've got, you know, some jazzers in the group, you could turn a soloist loose on the last last statement of the of the whole oh. thing and make it really exciting in that in that way. So yes, hundred um, percent. One of the one of the things I try to do is to say you're if you've purchased this, you are licensed to use it any way you need to make all the copies you need for your band. Please, you know, don't give it to other directors, but but within your usage, uh, any bands that you conduct, make the copies you need for your kids and adapt it any way you need to, to, to make it work for your group. Because that's, which, 
everybody's that's a little priceless. different. That's priceless to be able to do that, knowing that this is what was the intent if I purchased it. I have to tell you, we did alter one. I think I sent you a message about it because it was so funny. Uh, it was Bring That Swing. We played on our final concert this year. And right. they took that and that open section in the middle. And <laughs> the kids realized we could play, uh, we could Rickroll the audience. So so it was great because it wasn't just learning the Rickroll. They had to learn to go from swing into the straight, you know, the 16th note feel and then back out of it. And we added drum kit and an upright or electric bass with it. And it was totally different than anything we've done. But uh, the kids actually you know, got to make an arrangement of it. They took that centerpiece that was supposed to be open solos. Nobody wanted to solo by themselves, but they just sure all wanted to rickroll their parents. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, just the fun that they had. And it, 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 um, it, the, yeah, the way you've done this, I just, I'm really impressed with it and super excited. And I want to talk to you a little bit more and talk to folks about how they can get uh, into more of your stuff. But before we do that, I wanted to ask, invite all of you listeners out there, um, Thank you for making a difference in kids' lives for what, with what you're doing. But first, I want you to think about how you could put some of these practices that we keep talking about into practice um, in your own life. Welcome, Band Director Bootcamp listeners. If you're feeling a bit burnt out and are ready for support and accountability partners in your wellness and productivity, we have an amazing opportunity for you. Join our 90-day virtual boot camp, a community initiative designed for busy band directors like you who love their job but seek a more sustainable approach. We'll meet weekly, discuss your wellness goals, and develop strategies to help you achieve them. We'll tackle productivity hacks and fine-tune systems for the upcoming school year. With 35 years of experience, I've got some tricks and tips up my sleeve that I can't wait to share. So as we move into a new season of our lives, if you want to feel empowered and supported by like-minded individuals, this is your chance. Reach out to me at banddirectorbootcamp.com or click on the link in our show notes to schedule a 15-minute call. Let's ensure this is the right fit for you, get you signed up, and embark on this wellness journey together. Because together, we rise. All right, we are back with Roger Fletcher. And Roger, before we do anything, I want to make sure we share um, your website with folks so they can go dig into this and learn more. What's the best way for folks to find out about you and your stuff? Um, right now, it, to, to be able to look at and purchase all of the tunes or any any that you choose to and still be able to use the, uh, a district PO if you need to. Uh, is is my TPT site. So on on Teachers Pay Teachers, uh, my site is Roger Fletcher Music, or if you search Tiered Tunes, it'll it'll take you right to that as well. Uh, there's I also have RogerFletcherMusic.com, uh, which right now is kind of back under construction to introduce some new things for fall. Um, but um, but it's out there too, and you'll want to check that. I usually have a freebie at that that you can can take right now. It's uh, my skills based practice tracker to try to get away from lying about how many minutes you've practiced and actually what? accomplished something. <laughs> Wait, that's crazy. Nobody would ever do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have just a minute or two left here. So um, yeah, I hope people have gotten a really clearer idea of how these tiered tunes can differentiate. There's your word, you know, you got to differentiate for students. When we have students on 504s, they can still contribute in meaningful ways and learn in meaningful ways while we're not having to have other kids wait because we've now, I mean, you've differentiated for all of us. So we can say we're using tiered tunes. We write this in our, you know, our evaluations and it's helping all of us. It's, no, it's win-win. Really win. Yeah. So, um, this is, oh, by the way, you know how I purchased a bunch of your music? I'm just putting this out there for folks. I got a PTA grant because I said, uh, and I, anybody out there, if you're like, well, I want to do this and I need this and you're not sure how to do it, you can reach out to me. I'll let you know how to write a grant for your PTA. They love this stuff because you're talking about reaching all students, tiered stuff, and then you'll perform it in public and acknowledge PTA for the grant that they gave you. It was fabulous. Uh, so they'll give me more money next year because of that probably. Yeah, so great. anyway, yeah. So thinking that way, you guys, because, um, you know, you could use your own music budget, but but this kind of thing that's so geared towards the actual in-class learning stuff is is priceless and other people's money is always good, right? So, Roger, could you leave us with, let's think about our newer teachers um, and, and maybe something as they're getting started and it kind of seems overwhelming, any piece of advice for them so they can do this for decades and decades like you and I have had the privilege <laughs> of doing? Um. Wow. 
Uh, yeah, <laughs> caught, caught me off guard a little bit with that one. Um, just, I guess, as a new teacher, you, you've spent all these years preparing for this and dreaming about what it's going to be like. If you're like me, I, I knew I wanted to do that in fifth grade because my director was having more fun than anybody else in the building, <laughs> adult or kid. Uh, you don't have to do it all in the first year and you need to take care of yourself in the first year, even though the tendency is to just kind of 24 seven, have your brain locked on to this thing that you're so passionate about. It's a very natural thing, but take care of yourself. It's kind of like the, uh, the talk at the beginning of a, an airplane flight where they talk about the you putting on your own, your own oxygen mask before you help your, your child. And it's, it's a little counterintuitive, but if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of them the way that you want to. I used to be so offended when they said that on the plane. I'm like, are you kidding me? I have to protect my child first. Right. Then I re- it's it's I, very counterintuitive. I, it but. is. But then it's so true. And I, that's why I wrote my first book. I love my job, but it's killing me because I could, I, I couldn't take care. I didn't take care of myself and it damn near took me out. So you guys, this is advice from old people that have been around the block a few times. Listen to it. It's true stuff. True story. Man, I'm so excited to have gotten to meet you, Roger. And I'm so grateful that you were here today. Thank you so much. Great meeting you too. And I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Well, thank you to Roger and to all of you who join us and make a difference in kids' lives through the magic of music education every single day. You matter. And so does the work you do. So join us next time on Band Director Bootcamp for more uh, episodes of productivity and wellness tips to help you in this busy or in this great career, but in an easier way.